In today's video, we are playing with all new makeup. I have so many hot new releases in makeup. These products just hit Sephora within the last 30 days. These are the products that everyone is talking about. I spent a small fortune purchasing all these products over the last couple weeks, and I'm gonna share my thoughts. Some of these I love and they really landed for me, and some of them I would probably pass or I wouldn't purchase again. So stick around, I think you're gonna enjoy this one. Before we get started, I wanna mention that BK Beauty is now on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel, you guys, so go over there and give us some love, subscribe to our channel in order to like kind of build our following and reward those of you that are following us from the beginning, our founding subscriber base. We're gonna be dropping special discounts that you're only gonna see if you're subscribed there. So make sure you're subscribed, you hit the notification so you can see when we drop little exclusive discounts and promos for our YouTube family. All right, you guys, let's get started. I do wanna call out a new dry shampoo that I tried out this morning, give you my thoughts on it. It's the Air Wash Dry Shampoo from K18. What intrigued me about this is it's different than like the typical aerosol dry shampoos that you see. It's actually kind of more of a wet formula. I sprayed it on my roots and then I blow dried my hair. It really did like freshen up the hair, but it left a pretty gritty feel to the hair. So much so that when I brushed out, it kind of had some friction to it. So the feeling of the hair, I don't really quite love, but if you are wanting an alternative to like an aerosol, um, option, this is one for you. You just spray it at the roots and then you can actually style it as normal or take a little dryer to it if you want to. So just, I don't know. I don't know that I love it, but just another option for you. Really excited about today's makeup, you guys. I have some really exciting products to play with. A lot of these are brand new releases. So I was gonna do this video entirely like all new release makeup, but I did go to Nordstrom yesterday and I bought a few things at Chanel and one Sicily Eye Liquid Eyeshadow that I wanna play with and they aren't new. So for those reasons, this is gonna be like a 90% new releases and then 10% some Chanel goodies. So I bought the La Beige Foundation. I don't know, what can I tell you? Let's get started, let's try it. It says healthy glow foundation, hydration, and long wear. The lady at Chanel was so sweet and just really informative. And she just said this is their best selling foundation. I swatched it on my hand. I love the way that it felt. So we're going to go for it. I got the shade, by the way, B30. And I'm going to use my 106 brush. Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. Wow. Holy moly. I don't even have the words to describe what I'm seeing right now before my eyes. Oh my gosh. This is gorgeous. Holy cow. Have you guys tried this foundation? I know this is not new. I am possibly the last one on, no, I'm kidding. I'm not the last one on earth, but I know this is a very popular foundation. So I kind of feel like I've been missing out on this all this time. Okay, let me rewind. Sorry, let me gather my thoughts. Okay, what am I seeing here? I am seeing a good medium coverage. I'm seeing a very like natural finish, subtle glow and radiance, but I would say more on the natural skin finish side. It doesn't look super glowy or dewy. It just looks stunning. It looks beautiful. Oh my gosh. I am not even kidding. This is wow. This is so impressive. Oh wow. This is so beautiful. I also love the texture of it. It's very, very light. Oh my goodness. This is gorgeous. <gasps> Why haven't you guys made me buy this sooner? I feel like I've been missing out on this. This is so beautiful. Okay. Those of you that wear this foundation, how does this wear? This is the first time I'm applying it. So I have no idea if this is gonna look beautiful in four hours or eight hours. It is described and marketed as a long wear foundation. Yeah, hydration and long wear. So I'm going to assume that it's gonna look this beautiful all day long, but oh my gosh, this is seriously gorgeous. Gorgeous. I don't need to keep blending it, but I just wanna keep playing with it because it's so pretty. Wow. Okay, you guys, we're really excited about that. Oh my goodness. Wow, Chanel makes some beautiful products. I've been sleeping on Chanel because it is so expensive. And you know, it's fun to buy luxury makeup every now and then. I feel like there's a different, there's there's kind of these different price points, right? There's mass, which is kind of more your drugstore brands and price points. Then you have like your kind of Sephora brands, your, you know, your Pat McGrath, your House Labs, your Makeup by Mar, your Patrick Ta, which are definitely more prestige. And then you have like your Chanel's and your Tom Ford's, right? And I don't, and your Sicily's, and I really don't buy or Ch Chantecai, you know, I don't incorporate a ton of those brands here on my channel just because they still are so expensive. And I know, I know you guys really appreciate me sharing kind of more products that aren't so expensive. So anyway, for those reasons, I don't share a ton of them, but wow, that, this is stunning. I am gonna put this into like one of the best foundations I've ever applied. I'm not even kidding. Well, let me, let me rewind. I don't even know how this is gonna wear throughout the day, but by first impression, I'm 
just shocked, blown away. Okay, let's jump over to concealer. This is a new release concealer. This is the Refi Concealer. I've talked about this a little bit. I've had this for a few weeks. I've been uh, wearing it quite a bit. This is what I took with me to Africa. I really like this concealer. The one that I loved before this, you guys will remember, and I, of course I still love it. It's the Say Beauty Concealer. That one's absolutely beautiful. It's very natural and radiant. I would describe this as being a little more coverage than the Say Beauty. It's still lightweight like the Say, but a little bit more coverage. And it has some radiant to it, but not, not quite as much as the Say does. They're both beautiful concealers and you can't go wrong. Okay, we're going to blend it out with the Anchi Hot and Flashy A506 Concealer Brush. And with the way that I like to apply this is I kind of like to bread the product so that I get product all the way underneath the eye. Then I'll go and kind of blend it out to about 90% and then I'll let it kind of self set for a few seconds and then I'll come back and do all my blending. By self setting it, it's just allowing it to get, to dry down a tiny bit and it's just gonna give a tiny bit more coverage. Lovely, that is so good. This one's a really good concealer. I've been working with it enough to confidently say that it's really, really good. I also wanna mention you guys, because I feel like doing what I do, you guys are gonna hear me say a lot, like how great and how amazing products are. You know, two months ago, I was talking about how amazing the Say Beauty Concealer was. Now I'm talking about how amazing the Refi Concealer was. So keep in mind, you guys, don't feel like you always have to go out and buy, you know, everything. Cause, cause you know, it's my job to review new products and give you my thoughts. And sometimes I feel, Sometimes I feel a little bad because I'm like, wait a minute, two months ago I was saying that you needed to buy this concealer and now it's this one. Just keep that in mind that just because I think this one is great now doesn't mean that I think it's better than the Say Beauty. So if you bought the Say Beauty, enjoy that concealer. It's a beautiful, lovely concealer. I'm still enjoying it, but I do what I do. It's rare that I use products. I, I never use products up. I'm always using new products. So the products that I'm using are always in rotation. This one's really nice. This gives a lot more coverage. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and move on to bronzers. And I have two bronzers that I wanna share with you. One is the Makeup by Mario Bronzing Serum. I've talked a little bit about this, more so on Instagram, I think, than here on YouTube. And then I also have the CL Sculpt and Protect SPF 30 Bronzer Stick. And I have the shade 01 Light. And you guys, I'm not certain if this is a new launch, but it's a new product. I picked it up and we're gonna do, we're gonna play with both of these. I'm gonna give you guys my thoughts. So obviously the consistencies are very different. This is a liquid serum and this is a solid cream and a stick. We're gonna start with the Makeup by Mario. This is really nice and beautiful. It gives a very radiant, glowy finish. I have the shade Light Medium, by the way. I do find that these run a little bit on the dark side and I like to just pick it up with my my brush. I really love it with the BK Beauty Nikki La Rose in 15 brush. And I just like to use the tip of the brush and I'm just going to kind of press it onto the skin. It's a very wet formula. It's very nice and natural, very radiant finish, pretty warm. It's definitely on the warmer side when it comes to tones. Really pretty. This is the formula that you can wear if you are skipping foundation. I cannot get over how good this foundation looks. I'm sorry. Okay, let's move right along, Lisa. Quit complimenting your skin. What I love about this is it, it, it gives a really beautiful glow and you can wear it, like I said, without foundation. It looks really natural because it really just blends into the skin and seamlessly kind of disappears in terms of like, it's just a very seamless blend, if that makes sense. It's pretty on the days that you don't have a lot of foundation on and it still works, but it also works if you have a full, you know, full coverage foundation on too. All right, we're gonna apply that kind of there. I am gonna go back in to add a little more definition and maybe sculpt the nose a bit more with this product. This is the Sculpt and Protect SPF 30. I've really been enjoying the products from this brand that I've tried. If you remember, I love their tinted serum. It has an SPF of 50 in it. It is beautiful. And I also have their powder to try, which I'm pretty certain is a new product. The thing about this brand is that everything has SPF in it. So I have been using this a couple times. It's really nice. Uh, for my nose, I'm going to go directly to the nose. I've been using this as a bronzer too, kind of in the areas that I applied it, the Makeup by Mario. And for those areas, I like to go in with a brush, but we're gonna do the nose first. I'm gonna use the same brush I used for concealer. And we're just gonna kind of blend this in. This is gonna create some definition around the nose. This is a nice shade. It leans a little bit cooler, but it's not real gray. You can use it to sculpt, but you can also use it as a bronzer. It's really nice. It blends into the skin really easily. Perfect. So now I just have a little more definition, a little bit of shaping around the nose. Just to add a little bit of definition, I'm gonna go straight to the brush, do the product, 
And we're just gonna start right back out here and just add a little more color there. So this doesn't give quite as much as a glow as the Mike by Mario does. It does give a little bit of a glow just because the texture of it's a creamy product, but it doesn't have that same luminosity that the Makeup by Mario does. So if you are looking for something that's less luminous and glowy, this would be a good option. I also like that the stick is pretty skinny. It's a good travel stick. All right, now we are bronzed up. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit to the nose. Okay, a couple call outs that I wanna mention about the products that I've already applied that I forgot to mention. So the Chanel foundation is made up of 40% water. It has medium coverage and it says that it wears an up to 12 hours and it has a radiant finish and it's very moisturizing. So those are some of the call outs from the website. Okay, another product that I bought that I indulged in yesterday is this Chanel Sheer Healthy Glow Highlighting Fluid. I just love this. I tried it on my hand and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so, so beautiful. So this is a pearly glow. It retails for $54. It's a water light liquid face highlighter that illuminates the skin, gives a very dewy finish. It also has vitamin C in it. It comes in another color that is slightly darker and either color would work. I wanted something that wasn't gonna add any warmth to the skin. So I went with this one. This is the lightest. I thought this formula was so beautiful. I'm gonna show you guys. I'm gonna kind of rub it right here so you can really see once it's blended into the skin. It just gives a gorgeous, look at that a gorgeous glow to the skin. It's so lightweight. It kind of reminds me, not, not in texture to the Say Beauty highlighter, but I love the Say Beauty highlighter because of how light and like it just it gives this lit from within glow to the skin. And this is similar to that, but it's not a gel formula. I thought that this was a great product that you could apply all over the face if you want a major glow and then just do a tinted moisturizer, or you could use it like, I'm gonna use it right now and I'm just gonna kind of go over the makeup in strategic areas, like really right here on the temple. You see what that does? It just kind of, oh, look at that. It just gives this beautiful highlight to the skin. Very, very healthy. It look, almost looks like you just got a facial. I think it's really pretty when you apply it right here in the corner and then you kind of blend it up in here to the temple. It's really beautiful. You can also kind of put it right underneath the brow. Oh, so pretty. Look at that, it's gorgeous. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit on the bridge of the nose. That's so pretty. So this is definitely a bit of a splurge, but I was in the mood yesterday, I bought it and I have no regrets. I usually don't like the puffs, but this one's really, really soft. So let's kind of blot this onto the skin. Okay, so this gives a very matte finish and it almost looks like it kind of blurs out texture on my hand. Like I have little tiny, tiny lines of texture on my hand and it seemed to kind of blur and smooth everything out. Actually it does, one of the ingredients in here is niacinamide, which they say reduces the look of pores and boosts skin barrier. It also has vitamin E in it. Let's use this puff, let's give this puff a try. And I'm just going to strategically place it right here under the eyes and center of the face. This puff is actually really nice, very, very soft. Ooh, it's so pretty. It definitely, definitely smooths out texture. i put a little right here on the forehead. That is really beautiful. And this has an SPF of 30, I think I mentioned that, but. Ooh, that is really nice. They did a good job on this one. They did a really good job, especially with that puff. I usually discard these, but I'm gonna keep this puff. Okay, blushes. I have picked up quite a few blushes, you guys. It's gonna be difficult to decide which ones to share here. So one blush that I recently picked up and really blew me away in a very good way is the Armani Luminous Silk Cheek Tint. I got the shade 62. This blush is stunning. I used it in a video that um, actually already went up. I'll link it here for you guys. You can watch it if you wanna see me apply this one. What I love about this, typically these liquid blushes, they're kind of a hit or miss for me. Either they're super, super pigmented which means you have to blend them out really quickly and they can be a little harder to work with or they're really, really sheer and it just kind of disappears. So I went into this not really thinking or expecting that I was going to love this product, but this one really blew me away. It's the perfect amount of pigment and it just blended out beautifully and so effortlessly. It was absolutely stunning. So I really love this, but I'm since I already applied this in a video and that video is already live, I'm going to skip this one, but I just want to give you my thoughts on it. A couple of other blush that I picked up, I picked up the house labs what are these called the color fuse glassy blush balm and i got two shades i got the shade glassy rosette i think we're gonna play with these because i'm kind of excited about them i do love the packaging this is ooh, that's stunning okay that color is gorgeous that's glassy rosette and then i also got the shade what shade is this this is glassy hibiscus this is really pretty it's more of a plum color Ooh, this is gorgeous look at this that's glassy hibiscus and glassy rosette 
set. So these two are pretty. I think we're going to go with these. I think that's what we're going to apply today. We might double blush it. We might just double blush it. And then I also got the Pat McGrath. What are these called? These are the Divine Blush Legendary Glow Contour Balm. I got Paradise Peony. Let's see. Let's do it on this hand right here. These are a similar formula. A little bit more sheer. These, these seem to be a little bit more sheer than the House Labs. So that's Paradise Peony. And this seems to have a little bit more shine. They both are kind of a dewy, shiny finish, but the Pat McGrath seems to be a little bit more of a shine. And then we have Divine Rose. I'm really excited about these blush sticks. You guys know I love a good blush stick. Yeah, it's pretty. So these are very hydrating and a little bit more on the sheer side, but they are buildable. They're not so sheer to where you're not gonna see color. Okay, you guys. And then I also picked up this House Labs powder blush, which we might pair on top of the blush sticks. I got the shade Palmelo Peach. It's really beautiful. Okay, I've made up my mind. We're gonna go with the House Labs and we're gonna go with this fun color right here. That is the shade Glassy Rosette. Let me clean off my hands so I don't get all this blush all over my white dress. By the way, I love this. This is a white denim dress from Madewell. I got it last year. I don't think that they still have it, but I was in Madewell shopping the other day. I saw a similar option, so I will link that one down below. Let's hop right into Glassy Rosette. I'm excited about these. Let us let me see what, I, what my notes tell me about this product. Okay, so this is a serum-based high pigment blush with 70% skincare. It hydrates and makes the skin look plumper. It's all in a long wearing glassy balm. Okay, so long wearing, hydrating skincare ingredients, high shine finish, and some of the highlighted ingredients are fermented uh, arnica, goji berry complex, and fermented shun shunko which promotes collagen synthesis and antioxidant protection. I know I did not say that right, but just a few little notes. I'm gonna use my 112 brush to apply this and I'm gonna go brush to the stick. This is my favorite way to apply cream blush sticks, especially if I've never worked with the product before and I'm not sure how this is going to apply. Ooh, look at that, punch of color. Okay, so I'm getting a lot of color right off the bat. It's blending out nicely though and easy. It's got a nice, pretty, radiant, shiny finish, but it doesn't feel sticky or tacky. When I compare the textures of the House Lab and the Pat McGrath, the Pat McGrath definitely feels a little bit more, I don't wanna use the word sticky because that sounds negative because I think this is a beautiful formula and I really love it. But of the two, this one definitely feels more of a like a, a balm where this, when it goes onto the skin, it doesn't feel that way. It feels lighter weight. Oh, that's so pretty. Okay, let's go into the other side. Okay, these are pretty pigmented. Granted, I did have a little bit of a heavy hand when I grabbed it, but I have quite a bit of blush on. That's okay. I really wanted to play with this and see how this applied. So now what I'm gonna do just to kind of correct is I'm gonna take my foundation brush that I use. I'm not adding any product to this. I'm just taking the brush I just applied my foundation with and I'm just kind of pressing it on the areas that I wanna to tone down. Think of this as like your eraser, right? Whenever you over apply bronzer or contour or blush, use your foundation brush. You don't have to add anything to it. Just use it and it'll kind of erase or pick up any excess product. These are really nice. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and go into, wait, I have one more product to share with you that's gonna go on the cheeks. The Patrick Ta highlighters. These are the new ones that just launched, the Major Glow Cream and Powder Light Reflecting Highlighter Duos. I grabbed the shade Baby, and I also ordered another shade. It's more of the champagne shade. It has not yet arrived. Haven't swatched these yet at all, so we are gonna swatch them together. So I'm swatching the powder. Okay, so this powder is a really light, icy, pink. Let me show you what it looks like. It seems real light. I don't know how this is going to look. It seems pretty dry, honestly. It doesn't seem like a real creamy formula, even though it's a powder, it doesn't feel, it feels kind of dry, honestly. If I'm, if I'm being totally honest, I'm not loving it. Let's swatch the, ooh, the cream feels lovely though. The cream feels really, really nice. Let me really work my finger into this. Okay, so the cream feels like more of a translucent balm. It looks pink in here, but when I look at that on my finger, on my finger, it's pretty much translucent, you guys. It's almost like a clear balm with a little bit of sparkle to it. So I have a feeling this is gonna give the skin a very wet look. I don't think you're gonna see a lot of color from this. I think you're just gonna have kind of a wet look. I'm gonna use the same brush that I used and we're gonna go into the cream side. Okay, it's pretty. It's not a product I think that I would really use very regularly though. This definitely has more of a stickier, tackier feel for sure. Let's try the powder. Let's try the powder on top. Ooh, the powder on top is nice. It doesn't add a lot of color. It just adds a lot of 
highlight. All right, it's not bad. Not bad, but nothing I'm crazy about. And not necessarily saying that it's a bad product. I think it's just the type of product that I personally won't really go to or see myself using very much. But there are quick thoughts on that. Let's go ahead and hydrate our lips because I bought a product that I'm excited to share. This isn't a new release. This is the Tatcha, uh, the Kisu Lip Mask. And I just kind of was strolling the skincare aisle and I found this and I tested it and swatched it. I was like, I have to have it. It has a little spatula on the top of it so that you can get your product out. Oh my gosh, this is, I'm, I'm obsessed with lip balms. I have, you know, several of the Laneige and I have this and then I have the Lawless one. So I'm a sucker. I have too many. I definitely don't need all of these, but this one got me. This feels a uh, amazing on the lips. I've been wearing this at night and I wake up, I can still feel the product on my lips. And it also, it also gives a really high glossy shine. So if you wanted to pair this on top of a lip color, it would work as a gloss. It's so nice. Okay, super excited because I picked up the Natasha Denona golden palette. And I know you guys have probably already seen a ton of reviews with this palette online. I was a little late to pick this up, but I'm really excited to play with it. It's actually beautiful, very, very stunning. So we're gonna play with this. I did splurge on this. I don't even know what I paid for it because it didn't have the price on the display. I just tested this. I was like, I have to have it. And she rang me up and I knew what my total was that I spent at Nordstrom yesterday, but I didn't actually check to see how much this was. So I apologize in advance if the price of this offends you, but this is the Sicily liquid eyeshadow. And I got the shade two. I just thought it was so beautiful. I'm really into liquid and cream shadows. And this one just swatched on the hand beautifully. It has shimmer, but it's super refined shimmer. I thought it'd be really mature eyelid friendly. Yeah, and I just love liquid eyeshadows. I think they're really easy to work with. It's a good summer shade. It's not too orangey or copper, but it's also not too light and just like a basic champagne color. I thought it was really beautiful. Let's go ahead and apply this all over the lid. When I would wear this normally, I wouldn't apply shadow on top of it. This would kind of work as my shadow, but because we're testing a bunch of new makeup, we are gonna apply some powder shadow on top of it. So let's just give this a test and see what we think. Was well, this worth it? Okay. So I'm gonna kind of paint all over the lid with this. I'm gonna go in and just sheer out the edges. I'm gonna try not to overly blend this. When you're working with liquid shadows like this, if you go back and forth and overly blend it, you can really, really sheer it out and then you're kind of losing the integrity of that color. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm just going to paint the entire lid and then I'm gonna go and feather out the corner. So it's just a nice, really pretty seamless blend. Okay, this color is beautiful. It kind of gives a very kind of wet look to the eye. I don't know if that's gonna change once it dries down, but do you see that? It's really beautiful. It looks very sheer, like not too frosty or metallic. I love the color because it's slightly deeper than my skin tone, but it, it really kind of looks like my skin tone with just a really gorgeous shimmer on the lid. Very pretty. Let's let this dry. Okay, so now that it's completely dry and you do wanna make sure that it dries before you go in with powder if you're applying powder. Let's dive into this palette. I have to say this palette is gorgeous. Usually when I buy a palette that has this many shadows in it, I would say that maybe I'll use half of them and maybe the other half are shades that I won't really go to. Not the case with this. Honestly, every single shade in here is one that I will go to. The exception is maybe this really white shade right here. I typically don't go for really, really stark white shades, but actually when it goes to the skin, it's more golden. Okay. So we have some really beautiful transition shades. I think for today's look, we're gonna go in with this one right here. It's called Aria. And I'm gonna take the BK Beauty Nikki LaRose N13 brush. I like this crease brush because it has a nice, like fine tapered tip, so you have a lot of control. By the way, the Nikki LaRose BK Beauty full set just stocked today on BK Beauty. By the time this video goes up, it'll be, have been restocked already. But if you haven't hopped over to our website or you've been waiting for that one, it is now available. We have had trouble keeping that in stock. It has been very, very popular. Okay, so I'm just sweeping this shade back and forth just to create some definition. And then I am going to extend it out a bit, kind of extend it and elongate the eye slightly. Okay, next we're gonna go in with this shade right here. It's called Nubia, and it's one of like the more foiled formulas. It's a really pretty kind of rosy, coppery shade. And I'm gonna go in with the BK Beauty 203 brush. I'm gonna load up the side of the brush. And we're going to just pack this right in the center of the lid. Notice how I'm holding the brush. I've got a good grip right at the ferrule. This allows me to really pack it on for the most like bang for your buck, right? 
I like this brush. It really reminds me of like your fingertip. It's the best for packing and laying eyeshadow on, especially if you're working with these more foiled kind of metallic shades and you want a, you know, a lot of impact. Perfect, so beautiful. Okay, I do wanna highlight the inner corner and I'm gonna go in with, I'm actually gonna go in with the shade that I said that I wasn't gonna use much, the shade Aura. We're gonna take the same brush, we're gonna use the tip of that brush and we're gonna apply that really right here in the inner corner of the eye. I'm also gonna kind of sweep it right here on the side of the bridge of the nose and inner corner of the eye just to give a little bit of a highlight. Okay, so let me talk about the shade because when you look in the palette, it looks pretty stark white. But when it goes on the skin, it actually is more sheer with a yellow, like golden shimmer. It's really pretty. Okay, that's beautiful. All right, you guys, in the, I really love the way that eye makeup looks right now. I think this is fine to just do liner and mascara, but in the spirit of trying more of these shades out for you, let's go in and add a little bit of definition. I'm gonna go in here with the shade Fog. It's the darkest matte shade. And we're gonna use the same brush and we're just going to plop that right here in the outer corner. And I'm just gonna kind of move my brush in little circular motions. I'm not spreading it or moving that shadow all over the eye. It's really dark. I just want it concentrated right here in this outer corner. So I'm gonna keep my brush in the same place, but I'm just gonna move it in circular motions. And I'm almost putting myself to sleep. This feels so good. Perfect. These shadows blend out really nicely. The quality is what you would expect from Natasha Denona. So there's no disappointment there. It's been a while since I bought one of these big palettes like this. I've really just been embracing smaller palettes, more simple eye looks. And so it has been a while. I kind of went a little heavier on this side, so I need to even things out now. Okay, you guys, let's move into creating a little definition on the lower lash line. Um, I'm gonna go in with the N11 brush, and we're gonna go into this palette. We're gonna use the same shadow that we used in the crease. And we're just gonna load this brush up, and we're just gonna work this into our lower lash line. Next, we're going to just sweep away any fallout and kind of clean up under the eye. We're using the 113 brush for that. I didn't add any product to this brush. I love this brush though for setting underneath the eyes. It's also a great brush to clean up like I'm doing if you wanna add a little powder. Okay, we're gonna leave the liner on the upper lashes bare. Mascara, let's talk about a new mascara. This is from Swede Beauty. They sent me some of their products and I've been seeing this mascara all over my feed lately. I have been using it and I do like it. So I'm already gonna put that out there. What I like about this mascara, one, I like the wand. I love wands like this. It's the wand that has the tiny little flexible teeth all over, just you know, circling the entire wand. What I love about this wands like this is they really do a great job of grabbing coating and separating every single lash. They're also, as you notice, very clean. They're not like real messy. You don't pull it out and get a chunk of product all over. Like, let me give you an example. One that I, I do love it, but it is definitely messier. And I kind of give this disclaimer every time I share it is the YSL Lash Clash Mascara. That mascara is beautiful, but it's very messy. And it is one that you tend to go through quicker because it's a little more, more messy. This one is not. So what I like to do is I like to put at the base of my lashes and kind of wiggle back and forth, like almost close closing my eye. I'm, I'm kind of closing and resting my eye on the wand, wiggling back and forth, wiggling back and forth. You can actually feel this brush gripping your lashes. It's, it's very satisfying as my girls would say. And I just wiggle back and forth, get all that product off. Once I feel like I've gotten a lot of product onto the lash, then I'll start sweeping up and distributing all the way from the root to the tip of the lash. This mascara gives really beautiful length and volume. It gives pretty dramatic lashes too, as you can see, and it builds up pretty quickly. I don't have to spend a whole lot of time achieving this look. It does give a bit of a heavier lash. It's not a super wispy, light, fluffy lash, which, you know, I really love a light, fluffy lash, but I do like this one. But it definitely does give a bit of a, a heavier lash. I like it, but I'm just gonna give that disclaimer in case you prefer something a little softer and wispier. This is a really nice mascara though. Oh, I can, I'm getting my hair caught in it. Last thing I need. <laughs> I've really been loving this look of like keeping the upper lash line clean and bare, no like no liner, and just really focusing on building a dramatic lash. This is one though that you don't wanna overbuild. It does reach a point where you're like, okay, it's getting a little bit clumpy, so don't overbuild it. You don't need to. It's nice on the lower lashes too. It'll give definition pretty quickly. So just a real quick swipe on your lower lashes and that's all you need. I do like this mascara. If you are curious about it, 
This, this is the result, no lash primer, no lash curler. Okay, it's time to remove the lip balm and apply our lip products. Okay, so I wanna share a product that I picked up that I found really interesting. It's the Refi Lip Sculpt in the shade Blush. Okay, and this product I had to look up before I purchased it because I was very confused as to what it was. So on one side, you have a lip liner. I mean, that's pretty obvious what that is, right? But then on the other side, you have this product that kind of baffled me when it comes to lips. This is what the wand looks like. It's not like a, a brush. It's not like a lip gloss brush. It's like a flexible plastic spatula. And when I rubbed it on my skin, it felt like a primer. It didn't, it's not a gloss. It's definitely not a gloss. It felt like a primer. So what this is and the way that you use it, you fill in your lips with a lip pencil. So I'm actually gonna clean this lip pencil off. It kind of got a little messy. So you fill your lip in with a lip pencil, then you seal it and apply the other product on top of it. And this product smooths out texture on the lips, blurs lines, gives a very smooth, like almost kind of cloudy look to the lips. And it also is supposed to be very long wearing. It has ingredients that create this barrier to just increase wear time. Some of the highlighted ingredients are dimethicone, which helps fill and smooth the appearance of fine lines. And then fluorine oil, which is what creates that barrier on the lips to increase wear time. So this isn't a product that I would repurchase, mainly because I don't like the way that it feels on my lips. It kind of, it just has a very matte feel and I really love a glossy, shiny feel. But let me show you how you use this. Although I have to say after having that lip mask on my lips, even for the short time that I did, my lips feel really good. And I'm wondering if I could wear this product and it would feel more comfortable Bet it would. But if you are someone that has dry lips, I don't think you would love this. Oh no. Okay, you guys I need to call this out. It doesn't look like you can retract the lip pencil. So don't extend it too much because it doesn't seem to want to retract. Yikes. Okay. So it doesn't retract, which is kind of a bummer. Or maybe it does and I just did it incorrectly, but okay, and let's apply this product on top. This product is really great if you need something long wearing. You like this matte kind of cloudy look on the lips. It's nice. I like to apply a little bit and then just blend it in with my finger. The actual applicator isn't the like greatest at blending it out and it will apply too much if you use it solely. So just apply a little bit and then blend it out with your finger. There we go. Okay, that's what we have. It feels kind of nice when you first apply it, but just after a couple hours of wear, it doesn't feel the greatest, just an FYI. Okay, so this is the finished look. Uh, let's kind of recap the products that we tried today and share kind of initial thoughts. I think the product that jumps out to me as just, uh, wow, product is this Chanel Le Beige uh, foundation absolutely beautiful. And I know I'm late to the party on this one. So if you wear this or have worn this, let me know your thoughts below. Do you agree with me? Do you believe that this is as amazing as I am claiming that it is? Let me know. B30, by the way, is my shade. I also have been really loving this CL uh, bronzer stick. It just has a nice amount of pigment. It blends really beautifully. I love that it has an SPF of 32. This is a highlight for me. The powder is really, really nice, you guys. It's mattifying. It's blurring. It also has an SPF. I love the little poof that comes in here with it. It's a really great, nice product. I think very mature, skin friendly. And let's talk about this blush from House Labs. Love this blush formula. So stunning and beautiful. Blends out beautifully. I love the color. The two colors that I picked up again are the Glassy Rosette and the Glassy Hibiscus. Both of them are stunning, beautiful everyday uh, shades. I also like the Pat McGrath, but if I had to pick between the two, I would go with this one because this one is less of a of a balmy kind of tacky texture and like it actually kind of dries down although this is feeling wet because i had the patrick ta highlighter on it this is a pass for me and again it's not because the formula isn't nice it's just because the type of product that it is isn't a product that i find very practical and wearable for me it does make the skin look pretty it really does it gives a really beautiful glow i just don't like the way that it feels necessarily so that's just a preference thing it's not like you know it's not like this is a bad product but this is something that I wouldn't have purchased if I didn't create videos for you guys wanting to share my thoughts on things. Let's talk about this liquid eyeshadow because this was the big splurge of the day. It's really beautiful. Would I buy it again? Probably not. It's pretty. I think that the Armani's, even though the Armani's are a bit of a splurge, it was likely, again, I don't know the exact cost I spent on this, but I think the Armani would be a better buy. There, I should just say this. There are other liquid eyeshadows that are pretty like this. This one's nice, but there are many other options and I don't think that I would splurge for this product in particular. I have two products on to give some love to. This lip mask is absolutely beautiful if you're looking for a really luxurious 
feeling treat for your lips every day, grab it, you will love it. And the Armani little luminous silk cheek tints are beautiful, stunning. How did they compare to the House Labs? Obviously it's a different formula. I think they both have about the same amount of pigment in terms of when you apply it. Perhaps I'd say the Armani is slightly more, but they're both beautiful formulas. It really kind of depends on what you're looking for in terms of your application technique that you like to use. This is gonna give a little bit of a glossier, dewier finish than this. This dries down a little bit more, but yeah, I love them, they're both great. Okay, you guys, thank you for hanging out with me. I know this was a long video. If you've made it to the end, let me know down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.